This is Josh Nelson, and to anybody who follows baseball, I mean, the I know that some of you have been bloggers yourselves, maybe not in this crowd, but I know we have actual like people who are Cubs bloggers and stuff, and this social media phenomena has been going on for quite a while, but it's really become more advanced to where um, the social media sites are a wonderful source of news, and often I, I find myself going there even before I sometimes go to the conventional sources of news media because they're on it. And uh, I, I, I date back to a time where I associated social media with, OK, I'm going to try to find out what's going on with the Sox rumor-wise. This is 10 or 15 years ago. And, and it was like going on there, all you'd find would be the equivalent of high school kids talking to each other, you know, just like, you know, you know just trashing people, trashing, you know, just kind of the general, like, not that some of that doesn't go on, but it's really modest by comparison. And a lot of the discussions now are very intelligent. I mean, you go through there, it's like people who really think and care about the team, and it's exciting to see. And, you know, you get plans like, what about this? What about this? And there's just an amazing awareness. And so uh, I know that uh, from just from re following the site, although not participating, I knew that that the Southside Sox site has become like the premier White Sox blog. And uh, quite a few of the people aren't necessarily in the Chicago area, but I knew that Josh was. So I reached out to Josh to talk about this. And uh, Josh is somebody who writes for them, but also he, more importantly, leads their podcasts, which are just sensational. If you haven't listened to them, they do it. Uh, during the off season, it's usually once a week, but you know, during the regular season, they're doing them twice a week, and they get really good guests, and you know, better guests than we get sometimes. But anyway, <laughs> like I really um, just really intelligently done, and you know, during the off season, they'll go through recapping the previous year, and then going, you know, who's available, what's available, but bring in top flight people. I'm sure you know my interest is always in the draft, and with the Sox having three draft picks of the top 50 coming up in the draft at the start of June. I'm sure there will be a focus on that, which is always well done. And so anyway, uh, we have Josh here, and he's going to talk about this stuff. I'm delighted to have him here. So Josh, no, thank you. Thank you. Let me put this on the other side so the people on the left-hand side can actually see. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you for the introduction. Hopefully I can live up to it. Uh, it. You know, it's an honor to speak to you guys as far as the Chicago chapter. As being a, uh, I've been a member for less than a year now. Uh, my membership dues are actually due next month. And I am a great fan of the work that you guys have done from the Chicago chapter. When you're a Chicago White Sox fan, and I've been a fan since I was six and a half, seven years old, so that puts me in 1991. Uh, Frank Thomas is the reason why I'm a White Sox fan. There's so much history with this organization that there's so much yet to be discovered. And the journals, the research papers, the books that you guys produce, I eat that up. So from a, someone that casually follows Sabre to the ones that contribute to that research, thank you. Because if you don't produce that type of work, Fans like me that are quite young aren't going to come across it. And we may forget how great the 1919 White Sox are. Even worse, we may forget how great 1959 was for the White Sox, how great Nellie Fox was. I mean, we talk about wins above replacement. Holy crap, Nellie Fox was really good if you're using Sabre metrics. And we, we don't think about that type of stuff, uh, especially in the present day. And, you know, there, you know, Richard invited me to come and instead of just doing like a sales job, like, hey, we're Southside Sox, you should come read us all the time. Uh, for you guys being authors and historians of the game, I've noticed that when you're doing your research, you're using a lot of newspaper clippings from the Chicago Tribune, from the Chicago Sometimes. You're using journals that were written back in the day, even radio broadcasts sometimes, to reaccount history. And today, I want to talk to you guys about what's happening with White Sox media as a whole because I think it is transforming, as Richard has alluded to. And who knows, 10, 15, 50 years from now, somebody may actually use Southside Sox as a resource 
to do whatever research paper, to talk about how great Chris Sale was, or how crazy and stupid the Adam LaRoche saga was. <laughs> uh, so let me go into a little bit about who we are, uh, if for those that uh, don't know us. Um, we are part of the SB Nation network. So SB Nation, uh, which SB stands for sports blogs, actually started when an Oakland Athletics blog and a Chicago Cubs blog decided to create a network of baseball blogs. And that Cubs blog for the Cubs fans is Bleed Cubby Blue. So Al Yellen is one of the founding members of SB Nation. And the Oakland A's guys, having a technology background, coming from Silicon Valley, built this technology platform back in 2005. And it is exploded. Now SB Nation is owned by Vox Media, Vox Media owns Eater, Vox Media has gotten like 200 million dollars from Yahoo uh, to invest into the media network to continue growing because uh, SB Nation now has 300 sports blogs under its network. It has a blog for every professional American team. It has even gone overseas to the Premiership, which Lancaster blog, not Lancaster, uh, Lester, Lester City, Lester City blog, uh, that has exploded. And believe it or not, even though the NFL gets, those guys get a lot of views, mixed martial arts is became like the dominant resource for SB Nation. Uh, Ariel Hulani, if you watch any UFC, you often see him reporting. He lives within SB Nation. Uh, and those sites get a million visits a day. That's how crazy traffic that they get. Uh, but for us, what we do at Southside Sox, we started off as just a fan blog back in 2005. Great year to start a White Sox blog. And it was just simply fans writing for other fans. Like, I have an idea, I have a thought, this is my opinion about the team, I'm gonna write it. And since then, we have evolved pretty much into a media entity. And every single day we write about the White Sox. Uh, typically have a morning column from our managing editor, uh, ma yeah, managing editor Jim Margulis, uh, which he's writing about whatever he, he thinks is important at the time for the Chicago White Sox. Uh, this morning was about Chris Sale. Uh, I know he's gonna come up with a post about pitch framing. So for those that are interested in the new stats that are coming out, he's going to explain why Alex Avila should be catching Carlos Rodon and not Gianna Navarro. But we also do game threads. The White Sox are currently playing right now. It allows fans to go and pretty much comment about the game live with other White Sox fans online to kind of create that like bar atmosphere. You know, if you're at a bar and you're watching a game, you're chatting about it with somebody else. Uh, and uh, what I do, uh, as Richard mentioned, is I produce the Southside Sox podcast, uh, which is in its third season. Our first episode had 86 listens. Uh, <laughs> since then, uh, for example, we had Chris Kamka on last week uh, to talk about kind of like his job. And he always finds these amazing factoids and interesting stats that get onto the broadcast. And it's great to tap into a resource like that. Because we use the podcast as a show, not only for us to kind of talk a little bit more deeper about the White Sox itself, but also if we don't know the answer, I will go and find somebody who does know the answer. And we always have a guest every single week. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we had Jason Benetti, the new voice of the Chicago White Sox on. About once a month, we have Dan Zaborski, who founded Zips. Uh, he'll come on to give us the updated Zips projections during the course of the season, which is always fun to kind of see where we started to, yeah, I said the White Sox were an 83 win team in February. Now they're projected to win 90 games, and this is why. And just educating our fans on what is constantly evolving. Richard said that he's interested in the MLB draft. Uh, Jim Callis from MLBpipeline.com and, of course, from Baseball America fame. Uh, he. I pretty much have him every six weeks. Whether he's talking about prospects, but lately he's all about the draft. We'll have him on in a couple of weeks here. He'll give us who he thinks the White Sox could take at 10, 26, and 49. And uh, we'll have Nick Hostetler, the guy who's actually pressing the button making the draft picks. We'll have him on the week after the draft to kind of explain why he picked the guys that he did and what he thinks of each of them. But the, the point of the podcast is, and the point of why we write and how we write the way we do, is for the White Sox media world, and I'm trying to diagram this as best as I possibly can, 
And I wish Phil was here because he can chime in on this because he's been a player in this for quite some time. So on the right hand side you have the newspapers. You still have the Tribune and Sun Times. Uh, Daryl Van Schoen is the beat reporter for the Sun Times and Colleen Kane is the beat reporter for the Tribune. They write about the White Sox daily and that's just the beat reports. On the television side, you have Comcast Chicago and WGM Sports. They are running the local broadcast for the White Sox. Uh, MLB Network, they, the cable channel for the league, they, they talk about all the teams, but sometimes the games are there as well. Radio has been a very interesting story and dynamic this year. Uh, for the last 10 years, the games were on 670 to score. They picked up the White Sox games after they won the World Series, so bad timing on their part. Uh, and then it moved over to WLS, which for those that know radio, is a conservative talk station. So if you are a White Sox fan and you go from your games being on a sports talk station, which I love sports, I want to listen to sports, to I'm listening to Rush Limbaugh <laughs> before the game. It, it's been an interesting dynamic this year. Uh, and ESPN Chicago 1000, of course, they talk about all things Chicago. And the digital, I mentioned MLB Network, because MLB Network runs all of the websites for uh, all the teams in Major League Baseball. And uh, Scott Merkin, who's been covering the White Sox for 14 years, 14 years, uh, all of his posts are on MLB.com. Uh, and even Phil Rogers, when he writes his columns, are on MLB.com. So MLB.com, the league itself is its own media entity covering itself. It's really weird, <laughs> but that's just the reality of it. And then I have this arrow down to web, and that is where we live. And it's just not where we live. On the national level, you have Baseball Prospectus, uh, which has been a terrific baseball site, and has launched many, many baseball writers' careers uh, since the early 2000s. You have Fangraphs, which is an excellent resource to look up stats and history. Uh, but now you have Dave Cameron. Uh, Eno Saris is also a writer for Fangraphs. He is going to be on the Southside Sox podcast on Monday. He'll try to convince everybody why you should buy into Avisil Garcia. Uh, also fun, he lists the best baseball stadiums with the best beer choices as well. And uh, Baseball America, they still have the publications, they still have the books, but most of what they do daily now has moved over to the web. Uh, and if you are very interested in the MLB draft, they just came out with the top 200 prospects, and they came out with their third edition of the mock draft. Uh, so if you're hoping the White Sox don't take a college pitcher, don't read that mock draft. Uh, <laughs> and then Big League Stu. Well, with no hitter. Think, so. yeah. <laughs> uh, Big League Stu for Yahoo Sports. Uh, this is the logo I could find. CBS Sports, Yahoo Sports. Uh, and NBC Sports, they have, taken, they have taken successful baseball bloggers, and now that is their job. It's, it's a glorified baseball blog, so anything that happens at the minute is their job to pay attention to what's happening every single day and quickly write 200, 300 words on it, content out, let's get some eyeballs on us. So that's what's happening on the national level for web as far as baseball media. And then you have local, so we, you have us, we cover the White Sox every day. Future Sox, I'm going to mention those guys, they cover the White Sox farm system every single day. And they do great work in the sense of doing in-depth player profiles on guys outside of like Tim Anderson and Carson Fulmer. Like Danny Hayes. I had no clue who in the world Danny Hayes was before the year. Danny Hayes got hot in Charlotte before he just got hurt. And here's Future Sox had an in-depth scouting profile on him. And uh, what's really cool too, they have the minor guys uh, write diaries about what their experience has been like in the White Sox farm system. Uh, so they've been a great resource. We're actually tag teaming. We're going to be doing a live MLB draft show, streaming it. Uh, so I'll be hosting it, and Brian Billick from Future Sox will be doing the color commentary when the White Sox make their picks. Uh, and Baseball Prospectus has now launched local sites as well. If you're a Cubs fan, uh, they have one that Sahadev uh, Sharma started for them called BP Wrigleyville. Great site to go if you're a Cubs fan. Uh, Sahadev has now moved over to The Athletic, and I should give them credit and put them up here somewhere because that's also a new web platform where they cover all Chicago sports. Scott Powers writes about the Blackhawks. And uh, John Greenberg writes, he fills in the gaps. He's been writing some uh, White Sox stuff. And uh, C. Angie, I believe, she is now going to be writing baseball as well. OK, so that's a lot. There's a lot of places you can go to get your baseball information. 
So why Southside Sox? Why would you just go to us if you want to get as far as uh, information about the Chicago White Sox? Well, the answer would be last year, not, we don't know. We don't know why you would come to us. Maybe because we talk about them every day. But in the last, in very recently, as far as the engagement that we have seen this season, it has helped that they are 24 and 12 at the moment. And what's the stigma with White Sox fans? They don't show up. They don't listen. They don't read. They don't care if the team is not playing well. And people see a lot of empty seats to start the year, and they're thinking, well, here we go. The White Sox fans don't care. They're not paying attention. They are wrong because we have noticed a 54% increase in web traffic in this season alone. So we went from 4.5 million visits last year, which was a record for us for a year. They did not do well, and we're gonna hit about 7 million this year. Our podcast listenership, uh, our first year was about 38,000 for the entire year. Last year was about 65,000. We're going to pass that amount this year, and we're on pace to hit 150,000 listens. So with the, the web traffic and the podcast traffic, we are noticing a lot more White Sox fans actually caring and coming to us to get that content. And I don't think it's just us that they're also coming to, but they're, they've got to be reading and they've got to be watching. Uh, CSN reported the TV ratings. TV ratings are up 66% from last year. So White Sox fans do care. And the myth is that they don't, and they'll soon come, maybe June, July. But they are here, and they are paying attention right now. And the craziest, as Richard was mentioning, is social media. Last year, if you don't, if I think hopefully everybody knows Facebook, you go to facebook.com and you can like things. And when you like a page, it gets fed into your feed, so anytime there's any news or any content, it loads up onto your homepage. Well, last year, we had fewer than 3,800 likes. So when we post something, like an article that we did, we use Facebook to promote it. So if you like us, it comes up on your homepage. Well, a month ago, we had doubled that amount from last year. And now, a month later, we've added almost another 3,000 likes. And with this, as far as engagement that we're seeing on social media, and our Twitter followers has also increased. With the old model, for White Sox fans to get that information. I'm, I'm, and I'm thinking aloud here. My theory is, is that because we cover the team every single day, that instead of trying to get piece the information from all the beat reporters from the newspapers, instead of trying to go in the morning and watch television, that it's almost became easier for them to just go on their smartphones as they're getting ready to work, go to work on their commute, to go to SouthsideSox.com and get the information that you need that morning. And as far as 